The Mental Health Foundation is worried appalling conditions at two secure units have harmed some patients and will scare people off seeking help. The Ombudsman has named and shamed two mental health units, one at Wellington Hospital and the other at Waitakere Hospital, finding some of their practices amounted to degrading, cruel or inhuman treatment. At Waiatero Mental Health Inpatient Unit in West Auckland, patients had excessively long stays with restricted movement because there was apparently no appropriate accommodation for them to move to. And in its seclusion rooms intended for people in imminent danger, patients are given a cardboard box to toilet in. At Wellington's Te Whare o Mataranga Rangi Mental Health Inpatient Unit, stark seclusion rooms with barely any furnishings were routinely being used to house patients because the unit was over capacity. Mental Health Foundation boss Sean Robinson says those accounts are disgusting and change is needed now. I totally endorse uh, the Ombudsman's outrage uh, and the fact that he is naming and shaming. I have seen his reports year after year um, and every year we have you know, said this is completely unacceptable uh, and... You know, to see DHBs accepting the recommendations and then doing nothing about it, uh, and you know, to see Judge Boucher then spelling things out in pretty graphic detail, the appalling conditions that uh, people who are, you know, they, these are these are people who need health care. Uh, these are not criminals, they're not people who are uh, in prison uh, and we wouldn't even accept this, this kind of treatment for people that were in prison for some heinous crime. So, you know, it's, it's just, just not good enough um, and, you know, in a, in a context where as a country we're trying to lift our game about our response to uh, the mental health and well-being of the population that this kind of atrocious service is still uh, carrying on is is just appalling sean what do you think are the most egregious things in this well look i, I you know i think the uh, the, the the captivity nature of it, that, that someone is, you know, kept in a very confined space, uh, you know, for a prolonged period of time when, when mental health services are supposed to be about care, treatment and recovery. Now, you know, so much around mental health is derived from trauma. This is a re-traumatising situation, it, you know, as is being put in a seclusion room with no privacy and having to go to the toilet in a cardboard box. I mean, for goodness sake, you know, um, that would be enough to activate me into considerable mental distress. Uh, and I think most people, um, you know, would become very distressed if they were put in that situation. And yet we're putting people who are already mentally very vulnerable into that situation. It's, it's just appalling. So the, the Ombudsman has concluded that in some cases, actually, the treatment was doing harm. Oh, absolutely. I, I do think it's doing harm. As I say, I think that kind of treatment is re-traumatising people. It is traumatising, and trauma is a key driver of poor mental health. Uh, it's, it's just not OK at all. When you talk about captivity, what we're talking about here is the unit in particular um, overseen by Waitamata Health and people were having very extended stays there, one 621 days, another 344. Just, just paint a picture for us here, Sean. These services, as I understand it, are supposed to be places of rehabilitation and reintegration. So stays of that long, what do you make of that? Well, look, I, I, I think this is to do with a combination of things. I mean, I do have sympathy for DHB services. I think they are massively under the pump. The demand for those services has sustained at ridiculously high levels, regardless of you know the government's attempts to put more money in to, to alleviate that. I just don't think that has worked yet um, and so the services are usually understaffed and and they don't have sufficient space
less often for people. But I think, you know, another aspect can be the whole service approach. So I don't think DHBs can simply say, oh, look, it's all the government's fault and politicians' fault for not giving us enough resource. You know, I, I think that is part of the picture, but you still... Uh, have to orient your service to what it's trying to achieve. And for for managers and leaders in those services to be day-to-day accepting those conditions for patients is just, you know, I, I find that very hard to, to fathom. Um, uh, and, and again, I think, you know, a, a, another avenue to explore is what has happened to the $300 million that has been put into DHB mental health services. Because, again, I do know from various mental health staff that sometimes the resources don't seem to make it to the places that they need to get to. So, you know, how are those DHBs using those resources? So, I, you know, I think... It, it is important to name and shame, um, you know, and I think Judge Boshier, the ombudsman, has, you know, has taken these steps because he hasn't had traction before. But I think if we're sheeting home responsibility and pointing fingers, then I think it's important that, you know, all those factors share some of that blame. So politicians, past and present, need to really look at the resourcing that's going into these services and into these units. Managers and leaders in those services need to look at the the practices and what's become acceptable and what isn't acceptable. And they also need to look at how have those resources been used in those those DHBs because, uh, you know, to be fair, government has been trying to put more resource in. Whether it's enough, um, you know, well, I would say it's not enough. Uh, you know, I don't think that's a question. I think we know that. Um, but you know, all of those factors are combining to do harm to people that we're supposed to be trying to uh, care for uh, and lead them on a path to recovery um, and, you know, support them to be able to live the best possible lives they can in the community. All that said regarding accountability and who is responsible, does any of that excuse people toileting in cardboard boxes and being confined to units for extended periods of time because there's nowhere appropriate to send them? No, it doesn't. It does not at all. And, uh, you know, I think as a... You know, any of the chief executives of the DHBs, any of the service leaders in mental health in those DHBs, uh, you know, any of the managers who are managing resources, you know, this should not be acceptable. They should be drawing a line well before it comes to this. Uh, And certainly, you know, to, to see this happening even for a short time should be enough to sound a very loud alarm and create change. And when the Ombudsman has pointed this out year after year, and they have accepted it that it's not good enough year after year, and yet they make no change, I think this is just disgusting. How do you think that this could influence Fano, who may be faced with, well, the prospect of seeking care for their loved ones, looking at units like this and thinking, wow, do I really want the person I love, to go there for treatment? Well, uh, yeah, uh, naturally it, it, it will be, you know, a, a deterrent. Um, and uh, uh, I, I think it's important to state that Judge Boshier also pointed out that in, in many DHBs, um, you know, this is not the experience, that the service is extremely good. Uh, he also pointed out that many staff in these services that are not doing well are extremely caring and doing their best um, uh, for the for the, the the people that are there but you know naturally I would think twice about uh, being admitted to one of these services I would think twice about uh, letting one of my um, family or Fano uh, go there um, you know when you've heard these kinds of, of, of accounts that's a bit sad if that's what help looks like it is it is, and you know, I think what Judge Boshier is trying to do is, is you know, sound the loudest alarm that he can and get actual change. So, you know, I th- you know, we actually need to see this change, and we need to see this change now. And that is Sean Robinson from the Mental Health Foundation.